Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today is January 30th, and um, I want to give you a little tip video today based off of how to fish lipless crankbaits and uh, rattle traps, things of that nature, hard baits with no bill. Um, and what I want to do is just kind of go over the specifics of how I like to fish them and the different ways you can fish them as far as deep or shallow water. Um, so guys, let's get right into it. All right, guys. So getting right into it, we're going to go, go ahead and just, I'm going to let you know what baits I'm talking about. For some people that don't know what lipless crankbaits are or rattle traps are, we have like this one in particular, we have a red eye shad, KV Strike King red eye shad. Lipless means no lip, no bill whatsoever. And I'm just giving you a demonstration of what a bill would look like if you guys don't know. This is a bill, obviously, and this one doesn't have a bill. So, that being said, we're gonna go, based off of that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about how I like to fish these lipless crankbaits or lipless rattle traps or rattle traps in general. Now, as far as, as far as deeper water, me personally, I like to, I would like to locate grass and once you locate grass, you want to give it a long, nice, long cast and then once you feel that grass, you want to yank it up, you want to pop it out so you can rip those hooks out of the grass and that can create a reaction bite, which means that bass is going to be sitting there maybe in the grass or right above the grass where that crankbait or that rattle trap or lipless crankbait is coming by and just react to it, they might not just be eating because of hunger, it's just reaction because it's just right in their face. All right, so another thing, as far as the lipless cranks and rattle traps, shallow. The way I like to fish, as of right now, what's been working for me, I've been fishing pretty shallow, not really shallow, maybe three to four feet, maybe five at the most, right along drop-offs and points in areas where these winter bass can hold sometimes when the sun's up, and we got a little bit of wind and current. Um, the way I like to fish them is, I'll give a nice long cast, and I'm using the high gear ratio, because I want to be able to catch up to the bass if it, if it hits and it starts running with it. So what I'm doing is I'm giving a long cast, and then I'm reeling in my slack, nice and steady. Even though I got a high gear, I'm not burning it. I'm not reeling nice and steady, and every now and then, maybe three or four turns in, I'll start reeling, and then I'll pop it. or pull into it. Once what it what that does is that slack in the line creates a momentum for this bait which makes it not just go straight through anymore or actually just looking it's gonna go through the water this way at a downward position. And what happens is once you pull that slack in the line, creating slack in the line, that rattle trap or that lipless crank, it's gonna stop and it's gonna turn sideways and begin to fall. And when you pick that slack back up and bring your rod pointing back at your lure, your lipless cranks. Um, excuse that. What's going to happen is that bait is going to straighten back up and just keep going. So you got a wobbling situation going on. Once you stop it, it's going to stop wobbling. Boom, turn, start to fall, and come back through. Once you pick up that stock and start <clears throat> reeling again. In return, what that's going to do is if you have a bass that's following, Nine times out of ten, if he's committed to that bait, what he's going to do is hit it on the fall. Whenever you create a disturbance, whenever you change up your retrieve in your lure. Let me turn my phone now. And that's 90% of the time, or maybe 100% of the time, if you have a follower, he's going to bite it. A lot of times you don't have to just burn it back in real straight. You don't want to just reel it back in straight because if you think about a bait fish or small little, little bait fish, maybe shad or bluegill brim, they're not just going straight through the water column all the time. They're going to dart side to side. Even when it's cold like this, some of those shad and bluegill, they're fluttering off and they're dying. Bass are opportunists, so that means any easy meal, they're going to take advantage of it and eat it. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up a clip for you guys so you can see in my previous video I think it was the 5th of January I hit about 14 pounds fishing this gizzard shad pattern 
a little bit crankier. And the reason why I hit about 14 pounds, I believe these bass were schooling them right on the drop off, which was right at about three feet. I don't know how far it dropped off, maybe six to seven, but it was a, a three feet flat area I was fishing, but I was casting to that drop off where those fish were sitting at. And how I know, I was uh, taking my kayak and kind of scanned over and looking for fish, looking for bait fish in previous uh, fishing attempts out there on that particular lake. And I remember, I kept a, a mental note, there's a drop off right here, so when I'm on foot, I'm gonna continue to cast in the direction and hitting that point, hitting that drop off for me. So that's how I caught those fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a clip up for you guys right now so you can see that motion of when I'm casting and popping that line, creating disturbance in my retrieve. Every fish I caught that day was right after I created a disturbance in my retrieve. So check it out guys. I bet your swim jig will work. Oh, I mean when you think about it, it hadn't been any small ones. There's a lot of small ones in here. Nothing under two pounds. That first one was what? We didn't weigh it, but it was at least two. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Fish. Yep. You get you alright? Oh, he choked it. Oh, it's gone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. You got it. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, my bag's over there. That's right at five. Yeah. Look at that. All right, guys, now that you've seen that clip of how I caught these fish, and a lot to you, not every single fish, every bite that I got was on a disturbance in my retrieve. And this is key, that's, that's really key when you're fishing hard baits or any kind of bait in general, is your retrieve and disturbance. If you're fishing rattle traps, you're fishing crank baits, uh, square wheels, uh, deep diving cranks, mid level di uh, diving cranks, you want to disturb your retrieve, you want to change it up. Because bass are going to react to that and bass are going to take advantage of that disturbance because they'll realize, okay, this is something I want to take advantage of. I'm going to eat it. So, guys, um, that's just a little tip on how I like to fish them. Uh, everybody else is going to have a different opinion, but I believe, strongly believe that that is how bass like to feed. That's going to get you a bite nine times out of ten. And you don't have to just burn it back to the shore or burn it back to the boat. Excuse my phone again. Burn it back to the boat like a lot of people would do. A beginner fisherman, me thinking rattle traps or thinking crankbaits, I'm just going to cast out and retrieve. But I've learned to change my retrieve and get more bites. So guys, another tip for you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying these tips. I'm enjoying giving them to you. I'm enjoying sharing my knowledge about uh, different lures and how to fish them and pretty much 
targeting this time of the year and what lures I like to use. So guys, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, share my videos, drop a comment below, and uh, I will be putting in the description to the video I'm talking about as far as the fish that I caught that day, those 14 pounds of bass. I'll put a link in the description below so you guys check that out. But anyways, guys, not going to hold you up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'll catch you in the next episode.